we live in a day and age where we have access to social media, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, you name it, access to any NBA highlights we want to watch from the 50s to the 60s to the 70s to the 80s to the 90s to the early 2000s into now. And now we see a lot of young players in high school and college are finally getting paid. And I know in high school, you really don't supposed to be getting paid, but let's be honest. Players have been getting paid forever in high school. If you are a top talent in high school, you bring it in a bag some way or another. But social media, the thing around social media, building a brand instead of working on your skill. And Brandon Jennings, he took to Twitter and had some choice words to say. Some I agree with, some I really don't agree with so i agree and disagree at the same time with his statements but nonetheless let's get into the video welcome to the daily thinker podcast where we talk about basketball and theology today we will be talking about brandon genins you know mr nickel mr 55 that 55 point game he had as a rookie as a rookie in the NBA. Shout out to him. He is a legend. One of the coldest high school mixtapes of all time. I remember being in middle school when Ball is Life just really just started out being, you know, more seen. And everybody started using YouTube around that time when I was in middle school. Brandon Jennings was a freaking monster. He was a freaking monster in the NBA. He was a monster when he was playing with the Detroit Pistons as well. And he had some words for the way the NBA is ran today. He really doesn't agree with it. A lot of people don't agree with the way the NBA is ran today. They want players to have less control. They want the owners to have more control of the game, of the players, not make this players league thing and so let's get into the tweets about brandon genus and let's see what he had to say let's go okay let's start off with this first tweet this first tweet that brandon jennings made he said this it's only a couple guys in the nba that love the game outside the nba kids make so much money now you think they care so you think kids care nowadays about getting the game about getting better at the game or really loving the game of basketball when it's so much money out there okay so much money out there why i really care about the game just care about getting to that bag hey i'm all for getting to that bag get that money just because it's a lot of money and it's a lot of access to money for young players, high school, college, and just pro players in general. That is a great problem to have, okay? That's a great problem to have. I don't want nobody complaining about, hey, it's too much money out here. Now they don't care. And then if you don't get paid enough, they're like, hey, pay me enough so I can really go out there and play. But to have this problem is a good problem. In my opinion, just because it's a lot of money out there in a certain area, Okay, you are a specialist when it comes to playing basketball. So you will get paid like a specialist. And a lot of people, hey, they do say, hey, well, you know, forget the forget the game. I really don't care about the game. I just want to make money. That will happen in every single profession. Name me one profession where you can make millions of dollars and you might have an owner that's a CEO of a tech startup, a fintech company, you name it that's making a lot of money and he really doesn't care about the employees. He really doesn't care about just building a great product. He just want the money. You have those people like that. And of course you have those people like that in the NBA as well. You have top NBA players. You have NBA players who really don't care about the game that much. They don't love the game that much, but they just love making money from the game. Hey, I'm not going to blame that at all. Them at all. Get your money, get your money, get it. As long as you go out there and produce and do what you need to do on the court, I'm fine with it as a fan. Because at the end of the day, you cannot play the game of basketball forever. So maximize your time there, whether it's 2, 3, 10, 15, 20 years in the league. Maximize your time there and get the most money that you can. That's the name of the game. That's just the sad truth. And you can still love the game a lot, a whole bunch. You can love the game with all you got in you. You want to do your profession at the highest level and still have an urge 
to make as much money as you can in that profession. It's nothing wrong with that. So when Brandon Gina says that, so hey, yeah, kids now, why care about the game that much? You that much when you can just make all this money outside the NBA. But kids still want to make it to the NBA. Kids still love basketball. Of course, you have that small group. And I said this, and I will say it again. This is a trick that we see a lot when it comes to politics. You see people that's on the far, far fringe on both sides that just they might do the most. And everybody gets painted out like, that's them. Like everybody that do that does the most, everybody in that camp is just like those people who do the most. And so everybody who does not care about the game of basketball, doesn't love the game of basketball at all, they just don't love the game. And you don't care about the game. They just want to make money. Now we paint that and put that on every NBA player. And I'm not saying that Brandon is doing it. I'm not saying Mr. 55 is doing it at all. But what I am saying, some people tend to go that way. So do I agree with this tweet? Yes, a little bit. Uh, a little bit I agree with. A little bit I don't agree with. Yes, some players will not care about the game because there's so much money to be made outside the NBA. So why even try to make it to the NBA? Okay, that's fine. That is a good problem to have, in my opinion. Tweet number two. If I'm a fan of the game of basketball. Why would I go pay to watch players that can decide whenever they want to play? And this is something I agree with 100%. Like, I don't want to come home from work and put on the game and the top player is not playing. Me and my wife went to Denver for our honeymoon. Okay, you're supposed to go um, you know, skiing and things like that, but it wasn't snowing. It's November. I'm like, why is it not snowing in Denver? I'm like, what's going on? So we went to a couple of Denver Nuggets games, and one of the games we went to was to go see Dane play against Jokic, okay? We saw Dane play um, in New Orleans, but we haven't seen Jokic in person play yet. So we went to go see Dane play. I get there, Dame is not playing. I'm telling my wife like man this is some, this is some nonsense man ain't no way i come here and dame is not playing a couple games after that <laughs> he played but he was struggling with an injury this season and it seems like dame is getting better so hope dame is in a position to play all the games that he can play next season but i agree with this 100 i don't want to i do not want that problem of not seeing the best players on the floor because they want to low manage it's not right. It's not right. And I think this low management started with Kawhi. When Kawhi got hurt, game one versus the Golden State Warriors in what, 2017, if, my, if I'm not mistaken, in the Western Conference Finals. He had the opportunity to win game one. I think the Spurs would have won game one if he never got hurt. I'm not saying that they would have won the series, but they definitely would have won game one. And they did be Golden State on opening night that same season. Now, back to Kawhi Leonard. He did not play the following season. They tried to rush him in and make him play. He's like, nah, I'm not playing. And he was actually hurt. And <laughs> we know the saga that went down in San Antonio. And so he goes to Toronto. He goes to Toronto. He does this low management thing, and he actually wins the NBA championship. He wins the NBA championship doing low management. And now everybody is adopting low management, low management, low management. And I remember CJ uh, CJ McCullen talking about this. I think it was on first take somewhere CJ said. Ways to make games matter, ways to make games count. The last thing I'll say is you talked about healthy players sitting out. There's this uh, – misconception, if you will, that players just choose to sit out games. J.J. played in the league a long time. How often did your, your uh, staff tell you, J.J., this is a designated rest day? I'd fight him on it. He and would I'm, fight him on of, it. There's a lot of guys that do fight the teams on it. Full disclosure here. I played in Portland for a long time with Damian Lillard. Everybody knows that. There was times where we go through the calendar and it would, we would be supposed to pick rest days. And Dame and I would look at each other and we would go through designated rest days, right? Back to back, four and five, five and seven, whatever the case may be. We would agree to sit games. The game would come up on the schedule. I would look at Dame. He would look at me. I would say, I'm playing tonight. You playing tonight? He'd be like, yeah. We would laugh about it because in reality, 
we sit those games and, and people think we're sitting healthy. When in reality, the team's job is to protect that eight-figure, nine-figure mm -hmm. endorsement. And the way to protect that is to shield us from games where it's considered high risk of injury. They, they used to have staff come to them like, hey, here's the calendar. Here are a couple games. We don't want you to play these games. Like, mark out the games like a Sacramento Kings game or you know the lower level teams, you're not going to play that night. CJ's like, what? And him and Dane look at each other like, what? I'm, we're not doing that. So the low management sucks. I don't want to pay for a game and the players are not playing. They can decide if they want to play or not. I'm not saying that's the case, and I know that happened with Ben Simmons with Philadelphia. It looks like he really had a back injury, but what he did, I do not agree with at all. He, I mean, you're under contract. If you cannot play because of injury, that's that's okay, that's fine. You don't have to play because of injury, but a lot of other things were going on in Philly, and he did not end up playing in Brooklyn. So you have the Ben Simmons situation. We have the Kawhi Leonard situation. And a lot of people are learning, like, hey, I don't want to play if I'm not if I'm hurt. I'm not playing. Isaiah Thomas is a great example of this. IT, a legend, a dog, third in MVP voting. He is under five. He's under six feet. He's like 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, this dude is a legend in my eyes. He's a legend in my eyes when it comes to the game of basketball. And Isaiah Thomas did not, did not bounce back after that injury. Boston said, hey, we will take care of you. I know you hurt. You need to play. And same thing happened to Robert Williams this year. And IT tweeted, said, I heard that before. Like, uh, it's some nuance here, okay? It's a little bit of nuance here. Some players like, hey, man, if I get hurt too bad, I won't be able to make the money I need to make to provide for my family. And that is reasonable in my eyes. That's common sense. In any other situation, I think we will call that common sense. But, hey, I do not want to show up to a game and the best player is not playing. They're sitting out because of low management. Stop it. I don't want to be a part of that. I don't want to see it. I don't want it to happen when I come to a game. I experienced that before, and uh, I hated it. Tweet number three. For one, whoever made this player's lead was the stupidest thing ever for the game of basketball. <laughs> okay. That was funny. Brandon Gina said that. And he After that, a fan tweeted this. He said, NBA got to change its rules. And somebody tweeted, Ricky G., tweeted and said was it David Stern no it wasn't David Stern David Stern didn't make this a player's league it, it really was an owner's league Adam Silver got in when Adam got in Adam changed the game up Adam switched the game up he made it a player's league kudos to Adam shout out to Adam I agree with that I like it being a player's league I, I just like that in my opinion as a fan now he said, he said, nah. Brandon Jenny responded and said, nah. I feel like it was CP3, Braun, and them speaking on players, this and that. And my thing is, get the money, okay? Brandon Jenny's like, hey, get the money. Do that. I'm fine with you getting the money. I understand that. But the passion for the game is lost. Kids don't even watch games anymore. Just go to highlights on Twitter. And Instagram. Okay, now going to see highlights on Twitter and Instagram to me is not a result of because the game, the passion of basketball is lost. We live in a microwave generation. We want information fast. We want content fast. Like, why watch a full basketball game when I can see the huge part, the highlights of the games on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, you name it, Facebook. Why watch the whole game? That is a result of the microwave generation that we live in. We want things fast and in access. I think they did a poll somewhere a study somewhere I cannot remember it don't quote me on this but let me just tell you this, uh, <laughs> what I remember that they did some type of study that it says like when people when like Netflix puts out a documentary or Netflix puts out a show or whatever when Netflix put out a series that what it was it was a series when Netflix puts out a series People want to watch it in full. Nobody want to wait week after week after week after week after week to see the new episode. They want all episodes at one time so they can binge watch it at one time. This is not like the old days. You have to wait a week to catch the new episode. People don't like that no more. 
People like things fast and people like them quickly. Fast and quickly and in a hurry. You name it, people want information fast. That's why I think kids don't really want to watch a full game of basketball because we just live in a microwave generation. But the Players League being the stupidest thing ever, I don't think that's stupid to have this as a Players League to be tailored towards the players. The players are literally the product. Without the players, you have nothing. And, of course, shout out to the owners, okay? It's good to have owners. You need owners. Every company has an owner, have somebody running it, and they have risk, okay? The owners have risk. Yes, when they put stock and millions of dollars into a player, okay, it's a liability. And we can say that. I agree with that 100%. But you want this to be tailored towards your players, okay? It's more attractive, Players just are better in this situation, in my opinion. Now they have the opportunity, the mobility to move when they want to move, even though I don't like the way you force your way out out of a five-year contract. I'm not I'm saying that's pretty crazy, but the situation is that bad and you need a breakup and you all talk it out. It's business. Let's move on. Let's keep it going. And we do that in every other business. I don't care if it's a contract or not. If some things are not working out, we can't get into understanding. We're gonna have to make this contract split up. We have to go another route. But a player's league is a good thing. It's a lot of benefits. For the players league, just as image brand, building players up, making them more noticeable, things like that. That is a huge thing, in my opinion. And I like it. Hey, let the players have some control. Now, I'm not saying full control, but they just say, hey, you know what? I'm going to sit out tonight. I'm not playing tonight. I'm not playing tonight. Okay, I'm just sitting out tonight. I'm not going to play. I don't think it's a players league like that. You have a select few people who can actually do that. Superstars. If you're not a superstar, you have no say so. And let's be honest. And that's almost in every single field. I don't care if you're in tech or a doctor or whatever. If you are the guy. On the team, you have way more leverage than anybody else. It is unfair, but that is life. If you don't want, if you can't make it to work and you're making a huge amount of sales, they're going to say, hey, he's doing great. Like, he's our backbone or she's our backbone. Let her take that week off. That's just the way life is. So, for this to be a player's league, uh, I, I, I like it. I like it as a player's lead. But the passion for the game. To me, I don't know how people can tell if somebody lost passion. My thing is, and this is part of my worldview, okay? I cannot see anybody's heart. I don't know what people are really thinking or how they, their emotions are flowing, but you can see by actions. And when I think of this, I'm thinking of somebody like Ben Simmons, who he said he doesn't have a love for the game of basketball. I can't assess. I cannot measure and see if Ben Simmons doesn't love basketball or not. I cannot do a scientific run and see, hey, let me test and see if Ben Simmons still loves the game of basketball. So when it comes to checking out somebody's passion for the game of basketball, I still think a lot of NBA players have passion for the game of basketball. LeBron, CP3. And I think he said LeBron and CP3, they just don't have the same passion for the game of basketball. CP3, the, the man who would play for the broken hand, doesn't have the love of basketball. A guy that's still taking care of himself in the year 20 does to have the love for basketball does he love money that that much maybe he does but i'm sure he can make some money off the court him and cp3 instead of putting their bodies on the line and being away from their families for the majority of the year so what i'm saying nba players they do have a passion for the game but sometimes people lose passion for different things in different seasons so and i know that probably happened to bj before when he was in the nba i'm sure most nba players probably deal with this maybe they don't maybe they do i'm not sure i'm just speaking here i could be wrong that they lose passion during certain parts of the season. They have some type of passion loss for the game. But as a whole, I don't think the passion has really been lost. It's just that we live in a microwave generation with TikTok and entertainment, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. You have so much access to highlights to like why watch a full game. And even back then, I was growing up, I used to hear people say, I don't want to even watch basketball games. I don't want to watch the full game. I want to watch the fourth quarter because that's when they play defense. I want to wa- watch the last eight minutes, the last five minutes. And I was born in the late 90s. Okay, you were born in 96. 
So in the early 2000s, people were talking like this. So this is really nothing new. It's just now we have so much stuff on demand. Not the passion is gone. We just live in a microwave generation. That's why everybody wants a one hit wonder, wants something to happen overnight. Because we live in a microwave generation, we can get access so easy through things like this, through a cell phone. So if we're just being honest, that's just the way life is now. So, hey, do I disagree with Brandon Jennings on something? Yes, I do. But, hey, this man is a legend. Shout out to BJ, one of the guys who put ball his life, who mixtape on a map, in my opinion. <laughs> so, but I so go crazy in the Oak Hill highlights. So, shout out to BJ. Man, I just hope the NBA just continues to grow and continues to get better and stop calling some of these weak calls. Man, that's one thing I just don't like. Okay, now, this is his Brandon Jenkins' last tweet we're going to read here. You have to put something in everybody's contract to where you have to average this or play so many games, have to do this and get that to get that money. They just did it to Zion. Read it again. Brandon Jenkins. This is the last tweet we're going to read from Brandon Jenkins. You have to put something in everybody's contract to where you have to average this or play so many games, have to do this to get that money. They just did it to Zion. Now, we know Zion's situation. The dude can barely play, but the dude is a beast. The dude is an animal, okay? The dude is a man amongst boys when he's out there playing. We see the numbers that he has been putting up when he's healthy. He cannot stay healthy. So they put these incentives in his contract. So you got to play this much games. You need to average this much. Really, I just think it's you got to play this certain amount of games. And I forgot how many games Zion has to play. But Zion, he is, I mean... He's an outlier. We don't see that many injuries from people like that, the way Zion was getting injured. Hasn't even been in the league that long, not even five years, and he's just missing so many games. So I don't want that for every single NBA player. But if you don't have a legitimate injury, well, some personal, real person, like a personal reason, like something actually happens. If you're just feeling good and say, hey, you know what? I don't want to play today. But some of this comes from GMs, staff, okay, or maybe even owners themselves. All of this is not player dictated. It's not just the players. CJ McCullough said it. CJ said it. Him and Dan get a schedule early. They look at the schedule. We mark these games out for you. Don't play against Sacramento. Don't play against this team. Don't play against that team. So this is not just player driven. So if you want to make this an owner's league, maybe we still might have the same results. That's just my opinion. I could be wrong. I could be wrong here. I'm just speaking from my opinion. So to put different things in people's contract and everybody's contract? No, man. Come on. Or I think he's just talking about the superstars, like the superstars who make max dollars. You have to play a certain amount of games to reach those max dollars. And I don't agree with that at all. Don't agree with that at all. You don't have to reach a certain, play a certain number of games because we don't know what would happen in the season. You being injured, you cannot control that. You cannot control yourself from not getting injured. It's not some button you can press or some wand you can wave to keep yourself from being injured. So these things are unpredictable. Now, if you just don't want to play and you're fully healthy, okay, take the money away. I agree with that 100%. Take it away. But if you are unable to play, they still want you to, I mean, if you're unable to play, so you should get money taken away from you because you got hurt. Something that you were putting your body on the line for the team, for the organization, you end up getting hurt by doing that. Now you have to suffer for, by losing money. That does not make sense to me. Don't do it. I do not like this approach at all. Players should get paid because of their ability. Okay. And availability is 
important too. But you cannot control yourself from getting injured. Okay, you can't prevent yourself from getting injured. That's something that's impossible to do. So to put that in a contract for everybody, nah, nah. It was wise maybe for Zion because he has a history of being injured so early in his career. But you cannot do this to everybody. No way. No way. No way. Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments below about Brandon Jennings opinions on the NBA today. Are players losing passion? Okay. Should this be more of an owner driven league? Did LeBron and CP3 and them really make this a player league or was it Adam Silver? Y'all let me know in the comments below. Until then, guys, see you later. Peace.